So let's have a little look at a Todd Stuff lung messer. Hey folks, so we've talked about this lung messer before and I've shown it before, but let's do a little quick review. I'm not going to do the most in-depth review because I know I've done a lot of reviews of Todd stuff recently, but this is a fantastic thing. It is lovely. Um, Todd certainly knows how to make his knives and what, what has he done here? He's made a giant knife, which is brilliant, a lung messer. Um, so we've talked about the fact that this is the kind of typical mid to late 15th century, I would say, um, German area, Germ Germanic area, um, common person's sidearm. Okay, it is a cut and thrust sword, um, and it's very, very versatile thing. In terms of how well it's made, for Todd's part, this is entirely made by him, blade by him, hilt by him, scabbard by him. Um, the scabbard is his usual fantastic quality. It's a wood lined, so it's not just leather. It has lovely. Um, so that focuses. Lovely fittings on it, uh, top and bottom. It's got a very nice belt with his own um, his own buckles. And yeah, it's a lovely thing. I could happily wear that around all the time. It's a very convenient weapon uh, and a great design. I think a timeless. I, I, I'm amazed that Langmasters don't get more attention in HEMA than they do because they're freaking awesome um, swords. They're really fun. The fun techniques as well. Good treatises and um, really interesting weapons and they look funky. They're great at thrusting because a relatively short blade um, is relatively stiff. Okay, so uh, we've got a nice, a nice tip, relatively stiff, not going to flex much in, much in the thrust. So actually, although you don't have a lot of reach with a lung messer, because of its stiffness, uh, it's a little bit in that terms, if you think of it like something like a gladius or something like that, it's actually a very powerful thruster, assuming you're close enough to thrust. Um, so great penetration um, with this type of weapon, but also, of course, it's no surprise that it's all, they're also really, really good cutters because you can see it, this type of blade is, um, whilst it's able to thrust completely adequately, to a sense you could say it's optimised for cutting as well. Um, it's not the most nimble weapon, okay? I have to say that. So as a general weapon type, firstly, um, they're not as nimble as swords which are uh, tapered blades because clearly they have more mass near the tip which means that the inertia required to sort of get them changing direction a little bit more but because they're shorter that's kind of compensated for slightly really the main disadvantage i would say of the langmesser if you're using it against other types of sword is the reach okay you've got a reach disadvantage but assuming you're good at covering and you know what you're doing um, then once you do get into range to, to hit the opponent back, assuming they're using a longer weapon than you, obviously if they're using a lang messer there's no difference, but when you do get into distance to hit, one cut or one thrust from this is going to most of the time put someone completely out of action. I have cut through freshly killed pig with a type 10 sword and a sabre, and um, so I've got a sense of how it is to chop an arm off, essentially, um, to be blunt. Uh, but I, I, I would guess that this sword would take arms off pretty easily, okay? Uh, it was fairly easy with a Type 10, um, and I would imagine this will probably cut better than a Viking period Type 10, slightly, slightly better. Not hugely better, slightly better. Um, so yeah, very, very effective blades, very versatile, good for cut, good for thrust, blah, blah, blah. Um, in terms of Todd's actual blade, so let's actually review the blade first. My personal feelings on it are that it's good. Um, if I was asking Todd to make a blade for me, if I was ask, if I was commissioning Todd to make a Langmesser for me, I would actually request the blade to be a little bit lighter. Okay, I'm finding this sword a little bit on the a little bit on the blade heavy side, and I think. It's fine for certain types of sword for to be slightly blade heavy. If we're looking at something like a big, um, you know, a falchion for fighting in ar armor, or a, uh, you know, uh, for fighting in war, for example, rather than what I would view as more of a civilian um, sword, then yeah, absolutely, that might be fine. Um, it's not that I only like light swords. In fact, a lot of my favourite swords are on the heavy side. But I would say for this specific sword, for this type of sword, and what I see as a civilian centric self-defense weapon actually um, 
I would prefer the blade to be a bit lighter and how I would personally achieve that is I would possibly start with the blade slightly thicker at the base and I would have a little bit more distal taper but then I would slightly reinforce the tip. What Todd has gone for is a cross section which is most of the same thickness all the way down. It gets a little bit thinner but only a little bit and then the distal taper really starts from about level with the uh, clipped back. Um, the, the distal taper kind of starts from there which is kind of like too late for me. It means that in the cutting portion of the blade, to my personal tastes, there's a little bit too much meat in the blade. So I would have distally tapered it down here and then I would have thickened it slightly again just before the point. So reinforced point um, but thinner at the center of percussion at the cutting portion of the blade. In terms of the um, hilt, I, what can I, you know, there's nothing, there's not an awful lot for me to criticize. It's, it's just a lovely thing. It's lovely proportions. Um, I will say it's slightly on the short side for people who actually do things like Le Kuchner and, and you know, the, uh, the Langmesser treatises that have a whole bunch of techniques. They do lots of hooking actions with the pommel. And I would say this is kind of too short to do that. Could I hook this over someone's wrist? Probably not, actually. Not, there's not really enough extending for me to do many hooking actions with. And if you're a fan of the Langmesser treatises, then you would probably want that. You would want a longer hilt. So you can, you know, like you can have the idea or do even practice doing those techniques with your sword. And if you're using a blunt trainer or, you know, a nylon or a wooden trainer or anything really, you'll be used to doing those techniques and you'll probably want your sharp to replicate that. So um, in that sense, I think most people would probably want a longer grip and a longer pommel. However, to counter that, I would say, historically speaking, lots of these Langmessers, and this is a kind of elephant in the room for people who are studying Langmesser treatises, lots of the surviving ones do actually have quite short grips. If you look at uh, Talhofer, I believe the Langmessers in there have actually got quite short grips. So it's not that all Langmessers had, um, had long hilts, they didn't all. We, we know that some of them had sh short hilts, but it seems that certain treatises like you to have longer hilts, so you can do hooking stuff with the back. Pros and cons of the having the longer pommel, well, if you have a longer grip, it does mean that you can counterbalance the blade more easily and you get a slightly more, it's easier to make a blade that's a little bit more nimble and bring that point of balance back. However, when you do that, you tend to reduce cutting um, power. I personally, when I'm using a one-handed sword, don't like uh, a lot of handles sticking out below my hand. I find it just kind of feels weird because I like to feel, you know, I'm used to using sabers and I like the feeling of when I'm moving a sword accelerating just the blade forward without the feeling of accelerating a pommel backwards at the same time. And if the pommel's close to your hand, you don't really feel it. But if you hold something like a bastard sword or a long sword, when you accelerate the tip, you also feel you, you're accelerating the pommel backwards as well and I don't really like that feeling in my hand very much but that's a purely personal and subjective opinion. Um, so in terms of the quality of construction well it's fantastic you know all of Todd's stuff. Todd is I think of him as a, as a cutler and I think the thing that he really excels at is the quality of the of the hilts and the detailing and and um, the sort of honesty of production of, of hilts in particular and, and dec decorative elements and um, but also making something that's strong and could take abuse. Incidentally, I'll just mention, I would, if this, <laughs> if this was mine, and it's not, this is, this is Todd's and it'll be going back to Todd tomorrow as it happens, um, but I would be completely happy to chop all kinds of things with this. It's very robustly built. And just don't ever be fooled by the fact that Todd's stuff is um, decorated and fancy looking. It is very much meant to be carried and worn and used and it's very utilitarian whilst also being decorative and, and nice to look at. Um, some lovely details here on the, um, if I get my face out of the way, hopefully it'll focus on the sword. So there you go. Some lovely details on the, uh, the filed lines above the nagel, which is the nail there, and in fact, um, even on the nagel, um, and either side of the um, quill on block. And the fact that you've got this lovely bevel um, on those on those short quillons and then the line in here the rivets hollow rivets hopefully you can see that you can see right the way through um, those rivets that are done through 
um, antler um, and the antler is very tightly fitted to the and well fitted to the um, tang. Something I've noticed from Bowie knives or well, knives in general actually is that a, a common flaw with a full with a full width tang is that the scales, the grip scales, um, are not that well fitted or that well lined up to the tang. And Todd's done a fantastic job both along there but also down here on both sides and at the back on both sides. It fits really, really well. But you can tell it doesn't look machined, it doesn't look modern. You can see it's done by hand and the way that the quill on block is not exactly symmetrical, for example, so the, the cut around it and around the nagel have to be done by hand to fit precisely. So it's done with a huge amount of tension and care and, and it ends up looking like the real medieval product. It doesn't look like, um, you know, something that's made in a factory or churned out in numbers or cut out on a CNC machine or anything like this. It looks like the original artifact. If you buried this in the ground um, for probably about 10 years and then and then dug it up and slapped some acid on it or something, um, then it would probably look like an actual original. You know, I think it would, I think it would fool people. Um, the pommel, incidentally, as far as I can tell, is brazed on. Yeah, I can see the brass colour there. Um, and brazing was a very common form of connecting one bit of steel to another bit of steel, or iron and iron, or iron and steel, um, before welding, before electric arc welding was available to them, which obviously it wasn't then. Um, so essentially it's almost like gluing, it's a metallic way of gluing two bits of steel together uh, with, with molten brass and hatched lines. and um, That is all obviously rock solid, it's essentially metallically glued um, onto the full width tang. Um, there's no uh, there's no peen at the end because there's no tang coming through. Um, so yeah, a lovely, lovely thing um, with its scabbard as well. Um, personally, the only thing I would change is I'd like a slightly lighter blade with a slightly more reinforced tip. This tip's just a little bit fine and a little bit too delicate for me. So that's my constructive criticism or, or rather what I would personally change on it. But in terms of um, the quality of the thing. It is just like all Todd's stuff. Absolutely gorgeous. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.